Dan Denny has been building race cars for decades, and he is best known in the Oswego Speedway community for his expertise in building one type of race car over the last 15 years, the FFB chassis Small Block Super Modified. Denny drove Super Modifieds himself and logged points in 1977, 78, and 1981, qualifying for the Classic in all three years with a best finish of 17th in the 77 Classic. Like many race car drivers, he eventually quit driving to raise a family, but down the road he got back into building cars for other people. Years ago, Denny was instrumental in the Storm chassis, which was built out of the Oswego Speed and Custom Shop with Chip Wood and others. The FFB chassis name started in 2002, when Denny started building cars for and with the late Tony White. As time went on, Denny kept building cars for many other teams, and a legend was built. Over the years, the FFB chassis has compiled around 100 feature wins and several championships. Denny also had a hand in two other championships with Hall of Fame member Mark Regan prior to the FFB days. Dan Denny has built a great legacy in the Oswego Speedway and Small Block Super Modified community and will go down in history as one of the pioneers of the division. Congratulations to Mitchell Speedway Press, Oswego Speedway Hall of Fame inductee, Dan Denny. Ray Hedger's racing career has spanned several decades at Oswego Speedway and all over the Northeast. Hedger's first racing experience came in 1957 when his father Hugh raced a flathead on the Brookfield Half Mile Dirt Track. Starting in the mid-1960s, Hedger worked on his father Hugh Hedger's Modifieds three nights a week at tracks like Fonda, Malta, and Utica Rome. Later, after returning from the military, Hedger built his first asphalt modified in 1975 touring with the likes of Dick Clark and later his brother Randy Hedger into the early 1990s. Hedger's biggest numbers came from the Small Block Super Modified division with driver Russ Brown. Brown is the second winningest driver all time in the division, having earned a series leading five championships, three classic wins, and rides fourth in all-time points, all in Ray Hedger equipment at Oswego Speedway. One of the original builders of the Small Block Super Modified, Hedger had cars on the track right from the beginning when the class kicked off in 1992. He has built many Small Block Super Modifieds for many other drivers, as well as for himself. Hedger chassis have won around 100 features to date and more than 10 championships during the 25-year history of the division. These days, Ray Hedger splits his time between repairing and building all kinds of race cars, building street rods, and a lot of restoration work for all types of antiques but his legacy at Oswego Speedway will forever be defined as the builder of the potent Hedger Small Block Super Modified chassis. Congratulations to Mitchell Speedway Press, Oswego Speedway Hall of Fame inductee, Ray Hedger. As a young boy, Norm Patrick's uncle Jack took him to the area racetracks and Norm instantly fell in love with the sport of auto racing. Norm eventually became an electrician by trade and he and his wife Donna settled into their home in Liverpool. In 1965, Dave Wright started a racing paper to focus on the growing race community. Donna Patrick began helping Dave while Norm still continued his electrician career, but not for very much longer. A great race fan, Norm wanted to share his love for the sport with others, so he too became involved with the paper. In 1968, Norm and Dave printed a Data Racing News Racing Yearbook which for $2.50 gave the fan pages and pages of photos from various tracks. The theme and premise of that first yearbook continued on for almost 50 years as the Gator News ultimately existed for the fans and the promotion of the beloved sport. The Gator Racing News became incorporated in 1969. Norm quit as an electrician and went to work full-time on the paper with his wife Donna. Their children, Ann, Joe, and Susie, all became part of the operation from the time they were in high school and then college and beyond. In 1986, Joe and Susie became full-time employees, joining older sister Ann. In a time before digital cameras, cell phones, and the like, news from area racetracks was fed in by faxes to be typeset and paginated. Photos had to be printed by the photographers who took them, captioned, and often delivered to the Patrick House, where the garage was always open 24 hours with a drop box for items to be in the week's publication. The paper became very popular, especially locally and all throughout the Northeast. Gotta get a gator was the phrase associated with the Racing Weekly, and one of the first things you heard at the racetrack as the vendors walked the bleachers selling the newest edition. Over the years, the paper had developed a large, loyal following. 
A Gator Pace car would be seen at any given racetrack on any given night thanks to Raymore Chevrolet. Many, many drivers throughout the years have been honored with a Gator Racing News Best Appearing Car Award, and they still cherish that photo hanging in their house or garage. Through the years, there was also the institution of the Motorsports Expo, which is held usually in March at the New York State Fairgrounds to kick off the new racing season, showcase new cars, and allow the racetracks to hand out their schedules. The 30th Annual Motorsports Expo will take place on March 11th and 12th of 2017 at the Center of Progress Building. Of course, once again featuring a booth from Oswego Speedway. As the dawning of the new millennium heralded in the age of technology, it also brought big changes in the methods of news dissemination and sadly and abruptly, the end of the Gator Racing News in June of 2014, when the press that printed the paper suddenly closed its doors. The Gator Racing News may be gone and the yearbook's just memories, but the contribution to auto racing and the coverage of action at Oswego Speedway that Norm and Donna Patrick and their family gave us lives on in the pages of papers and yearbooks past. We hope you all got a Gator to look back on. Congratulations to Mitchell Speedway Press, Oswego Speedway Hall of Fame inductee, the Patrick family of Gator Racing News. Joe Morata has a lengthy history in auto racing, first dabbling into the game as a driver and then moving on to a career in announcing. Although most closely associated with the Dirt Organization and Dirt Track Racing beginning in 1972, Joe Morata's announcing career had begun in the late 60s on the asphalt at Fulton Speedway. Over the years, the list of tracks Joe has announced at is as legendary as his race calls. From venues such as Shangri-La and Rolling Wheels to the New York State Fairgrounds in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, and of course, Oswego Speedway. Joe was no stranger to the Steel Palace by any means when he took to announcing at the famed Steel Palace. Long before he ever started announcing, Joe says that he was an Oswego Speedway Saturday night regular. He and his wife Barb spent many a Saturday date night there. Even after he started announcing at other tracks, just about any free Saturday night found him at Oswego Speedway. In December of 1991, Joe and Barb were flying to Florida for a vacation. On the same plane was Oswego Speedway co-owner Romy Caruso. Romy started to talk about the new limited super modified that was going to be introduced for the 1992 season. Romy then said, with the new division coming in, we need two announcers, a new one to be the voice of the limiteds, and you're the guy we want. The rest is literally history. Morata has called countless laps, races, and memorable moments in Oswego since 1992, and Oswego Speedway is proud to have him as a vital member of its staff. Congratulations to Mitchell Speedway Press, Oswego Speedway Hall of Fame inductee, Joe Morata. Barnstorming the dirt circuit for several years, Tim Daru made the move to the asphalt in the early 1990s, becoming one of the original competitors in Oswego Speedway's newly formed limited super division in 1992, and he made an immediate impact driving his family-owned number five machine. In that first season, Garou finished third in the Limited Super Championship behind Russ Brown and Daryl Nichols with one feature win. In 1993 and 1994, Garou continued to excel, winning five more feature events, finishing third and second in the overall driver's title. His rapid success in the limited ranks pushed Garou to supermodified racing by 1995, where he won Rookie of the Year honors. Just like in the Limiteds, Guru wasted little time in becoming a contender in the Super Modified ranks, scoring a top five finish in his second season of action before capturing his first career win in thrilling fashion ahead of Doug Dodaro and Pat Abold in the 1997 running of the $10,000 to win Mr. Super Modified. From that point on, Guru was a weekly Oswego threat, and he had literally learned the short way around the Steel Palace in trademark Guru fashion, right tight to the inside hub rail. Over the course of the next nine seasons, Guru never finished outside of the top ten in points with seven top five efforts, including three runner-up championship finishes in 1998, 1999, and 2006. It was in 2004 that Guru reached the pinnacle of the sport, winning the Supermodified Track Championship handily over Tim Snyder and fellow limited super graduates Greg Furlong, Bob Gutermount, and Otto Sitterly. The 2006 season would be Guru's final full-time campaign in Supermodified action, driving for Curfee Racing, but he did return for three more cracks at the Classic from 2007 to 2009, finishing ninth in 08. 
As far as classics were concerned overall for Guru, it was an up and down affair. Qualifying for every classic he attempted from 1995 to 2009, Guru finished in the top five of the classic on two occasions, with a fifth place effort in 2000 and a third place run in his championship season of 2004. Four other top 10 runs would come in 2001, 2003, 2006, and 2008. Following Super Modified Racing, Guru returned to Oswego for a brief stint in small block super racing before returning to his roots on the dirt. When all was said and done, Guru won a total of six limited super races at Oswego and 13 total Super Modified main events, tied all time with Art Bennett and Bob Gudermel. Guru also cleared 67 Super Modified Top 5 efforts in his career, which spanned 15 years. Congratulations to Mitchell Speedway Press, Oswego Speedway Hall of Fame inductee, Tim Guru. Oswego Speedway Super Modified Division was built in the 1960s thanks to the help of dozens of drivers and owners that made the 500-mile, 10-hour trek from the state of Michigan. Topping that list of drivers making the weekly drive was Wayne Landon of Hastings, Michigan. And for nearly a decade, Wayne and his family made the long journey in their little Volkswagen station wagon. Landon's first trip to Oswego was for the 1962 Classic, driving his own car number 83. In 64, Landon took the wheel of the Jack Amon number 27 Super Modified. And for the next several seasons, Landon made the weekly trek to Oswego to drive the Amon Chevy number 27 and finished fourth in points for the 1964 season, as well as qualifying for his first Classic, finishing 25th. The 66th season was probably Wayne's best year of competition at Oswego. Having purchased the Amon 27 at the end of the 65 season, Wayne was once again a car owner driver and sporting his own car number 83 and purple paint job. Wayne's lone Oswego feature win came on August 27th of 1966 when he battled superstars Todd Gibson and Bentley Warren to take the victory. He followed that up with a second place finish to Warren in the 50 lap fall championship later in the year and a sixth overall finish in points. Landon is probably best known for his association with the Steve Joya Senior owned number nine, a partnership that lasted seemingly longer than it actually did. By 1969, Wayne was back with his own purple car 83. This one purchased from Charge and Falls, Ohio's Kenny Bartholomew. It was in this car that Wayne had his best classic finish in 1970 when he ran fourth. Wayne's weekly competition at Oswego ended after the 1971 season and a quick estimate of 150,000 miles traveled on the highways between Hastings, Michigan and Oswego, New York. But Wayne was not quite done with Oswego just yet. In 1976, local pal Billy Law talked Wayne into one last shot at running the Classic. The two put their heads and hands together and literally built a car in just 10 days. Wayne qualified and finished 18th in the 76 Classic. Billy and Wayne brought their car out again for the 77 Classic and finished 19th, bringing the curtain down on the traveling man's career at Oswego. But Wayne continued on racing in Michigan and the Midwestern states for many years following. Congratulations to Mitchell Speedway Press, Oswego Speedway Hall of Fame inductee, Wayne Landon.